गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट मैं सर मिली सांखला एंड टुडे अवर सब्जेक्ट डिजाइन ऑफ क्रिस्टल्स कॉन्क्रीट स्ट्रक्चर वी सॉल्व द एग्जांपल ऑफ फ्लैग द डिजाइन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी रीड द डेटा एग्जांपल पोस्ट टेंशन क्रिस्टल्स कॉन्क्रीट बीम ऑफ रेक्टेंगल सेक्शन 200 एमएम विथ इज टू बी डिजाइन फॉर इंपोज्ड लोड दैट मींस लाइव लोड 10 किलो न्यूटन पर मीटर द यूनिफॉर्मली डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड on span of 12 meter the stress in concrete must not exceed 1. Point, sorry 16 newton per mm square in compression or 1.5 newton per mm square in tension at any time and the loss of stress may be assumed to be 15 percentage calculate the minimum possible depth of beam and the minimum stress in force and the corresponding eccentricity now first of all mention the data that given in example b is equal to 200 mm span l is equal to 12 meter imposed load that is live load q is equal to 10 kN per meter then loss ratio eta is equal to 0.85 okay after 15 percentage losses then fct stress at tensile and fcw is equal to 16 N per mm square h is equal to overall depth of beam density of concrete is 24 kN per meter cube okay now first of all we we'll find out live load moment mq is equal to wl square by 8 because we consider the beam is simply supported w is equal to 10 span l is equal to 12 meter wl square by 8 is equal to 180 kN into meter now the dead load moment is equal to mg that is again W L square by 8, but here the dimension B H. First of all, we find out B H width into H. Okay, and density 24 is given. Okay, W is equal to weight of our load of our beam, and that is kilonewton per meter. So size B into H, then density 24, and span L square by 8. This 10 to 6 is converted into the meter mm. Now 432 b into h. Okay, multiplication of this 24 into 12 square b h and uh, divide by 10 to 6 and this will be in kilonewton into meter. Finally 432 b h after dividing by this we get newton mm. Ultimately this one is to convert b into h in meter. Oh uh, sorry in mm. Now next. Range of stresses at bottom fiber is equal to F B R that is equal to eta F C T minus F T W. Eta that means percentage of losses, 15 percentage. After that we have to get eta is equal to 0.85 F C T 1.6 minus F T W tensile stress minus 1.5. Now F B R is equal to 15.10 newton per mm square. Next we find out minimum section modulus that is Z B. Z B is equal to M Q plus 1 minus eta M G divided by F B R. Here Z B is equal to section modulus that is B H square by 6. Then M Q live load moment is 180 into 10 to 6 converted into newton mm. 1 minus eta 0.85. Then here the dead load moment we find out 432 bh divided by F B R 15.10. Then substitute b is equal to 200 mm. Size of width is given in section. Look at this. B is equal to given 200 mm, but h is missing here. So put the value b is equal to 200 mm, and after that. Solving this equation, we have to get this quadratic equation: h square minus 25.75 h minus 357,636 is equal to zero. And after solving that, we get h is equal to 611 mm, and we take a round figure 620 mm. So the size of section is 1200 by 620 mm. Okay. And area is equal to 200 into 620. That is equal to 1 lakh 24,000 mm square. Now we find out actual section modulus Z B and Z T is equal to B H square by 6. B is equal to 
and h is equal to 620 square by 6. Then we get 12.81 into 10 raise to 6 mm cube. Now next, dead load moment we find it is, is in form of B into H. So put the value B is equal to 200 and H is equal to 620. And after that we get live load, uh, sorry dead load moment is equal to 53.56 10 raise to 6 Newton mm. Now summation of this live load moment and this dead load moment is equal to 233.56 10 raise to 6 Newton into mm. Here we find out F SUP that means top stress FTT minus MG by ZT. FTT is equal to minus 1.5 MG 53.56 into 10 raise to 6. Here we convert into Newton mm. ZT section modulus 12.81 into 10 to 6 and after solving we get minus 5.68 Newton per mm square. Then we find out M INF that means bottom FTW divided by eta plus MQ plus MG divided by eta ZB. 1 by 1 again put the value minus 1.5 divided by 0.85 plus 233.56 into 10 to 6. 0.85 into 12.81 into 10 to 6 19.68 newton per mm square okay now we find out minimum pre-stressing force p is equal to a f inf zb plus f sup zt that means this is the ft we can say that this is the top fiber stresses near the bottom fiber stresses divide by section modulus of bottom and top fiber now put the all values that we find out and after that we get distressing force P is equal to 868,000 Newton and convert into kilonewton 868 kilonewton. Then finally we find out eccentricity E is equal to ZT into ZB FT minus sorry FB minus FT that is F INF and F supporting divide by area then f supportive stress zt plus f inferior stress and zb again put the all values and after solving that p get eccentricity e is equal to 187.13 mm okay now next we solve the example of i girder here first example is for rectangle section first of all we read the data pristress concrete girder has to be designed for span of 12 meter to support live load of 12 kN per meter. The permissible stress is 15 Newton per mm square in compression and 1.5 Newton per mm square in tension. The grade of concrete is M45. Assume 15% loss in press stress during service load condition. The preliminary section provided for the girder consists of symmetrical I section with flange 250 mm width and 150 mm thick and wear is 120 mm width and 450 mm depth. Check the section provided to resist the service load. Also determine minimum pre-stressing force and eccentricity for the section. Here the figure is given. First of all, we find out the area. Here, two flange, two multiply with 250 into 150, and the wear area 450 into 120, and we get 1,29,000 mm square. That is the area of this I girder. L is equal to 12 meter. Live load Q is equal to 12 kilonewton per meter is given. Dead load G is equal to B into H into density. Okay, area into density area already we find out 129 1,29,000 and density 24 kilonewton per meter cube but this area is given in mm square so we convert into meter square divided by 10 raise to 6 and we get dead load g is equal to 3.1 kilonewton per meter then loss ratio eta is equal to 0.85 and FCT and FCW is given 1.5 Newton per mm square in tension. Then FTT 
and F T W is equal to minus 1.5 Newton per mm square. Okay. After that, we find out moment of inertia for this I girder simply capital B D Q by 12 minus small B D Q by 12. Okay. Here this 250 minus this total 750 B D Q by 12 minus 250 minus this 120 that is 130 and 750 minus this 450 is equal to 450 okay 130 minus 450 cube by 12 now moment of inertia after solving that we get 7.8 10 raised to 9 mm raised to 4 we find out section modulus zb and zt is equal to i by y i is equal to 7.8 10 raised to 9 divided by central distance that is 375 half of the total depth 750 by 2 we get 20.86 10 to 6 mm cube dead load moment mg is equal to w square by h is equal to 55.80 kN into meter then live load moment mq is again w square by h but here the w will be 12 answer is 216 kN into meter then the summation of dead load moment and live load moment that is 271.80 kN into meter then after we find out bearing stress FBR is equal to eta FCT minus FTW. These values are already we know. Eta is equal to 0.85 FCT 15. FTW is equal to minus 1.5. We get 14.25 Newton per mm square. Now we check the section for ZB. MQ plus 1 minus eta mg divided by fbr mq is equal to live load moment that is 216 into 10 to 6 1 minus eta 0 0.85 55.80 into 10 to 6 divided by fbr 14.25 and after that we get section modulus is equal to 15.75 into 10 to 6 mm cube zb provided greater than of zb required the section is provided is adequate okay so f supportive that means top fiber stresses is equal to ftt minus mg by zt ftt is equal to minus 1.5 tensile stress mg is equal to dead load moment zt is equal to 20.86 into 10 is to 6 this is provided and this one is required here the zb provided is greater than of this zb required so section is safe okay minus 4.17 newton per mm square we get at top fiber stresses then we find out f inf that means bottom fiber stresses ftw divided by eta plus summation of live load moment and dead load moment divided by eta and section modulus of bottom edge again put the all values and we get 13.56 Newton per mm square. Then we find out minimum pre-stressing force required P. Equation of this P is equal to area. Then FB into ZB plus FT into ZT. Divide by summation of section modulus of top and bottom fiber. ZB plus ZT. Again put the values. And we get 6,5655 Newton. And if you want to convert this value in kilonewton, simply multiply with 10 raised to minus 3 and we get 605.65 kN. Then we find out eccentricity E is equal to ZT ZB F INF minus F supportive A F T ZT plus F B ZB put the all values that we find out and finally we get here eccentricity E is equal to 305 305.32 mm. Here our example of this post tension girder, I girder is complete. Now we discuss the limiting zone for pre-stressing force. Pre-stressing along the length of beam is generally adjusted by varying the eccentricity of pre-stressing force. In practice, generally use a post tension beam by using a curved cable. In case of pre-tension beam, 
द टेंडेंस मे बी डिफ्लेक्टेड बाय यूजिंग अ डेविएटिंग डिवाइस फिक्स टू द माउल्ड विफोर कास्टिंग इन प्रिटेंशन एज वी नो दैट वी फिक्स द सपोर्ट एंड देन वी स्ट्रेच एंड देन वी पोर द कॉन्क्रीट ओके आफ्टर हैविंग वंस डिटर्माइन मैग्न्यूट्यूड ऑफ प्रिस्टेसिंग फोर्स फॉर द क्रिटिकल सेक्शन it is possible to fix up the limiting zone for the force bounded by upper and lower limit expressed as a function of minimum and maximum moment sectional properties the stressing force and the permissible stress in concrete at transfer condition and working load okay if we derive the if we find out the limiting zone then this unknown values easily find out now the prestress equation at top and bottom fibers here first one is the f supportive that means top fiber p by a stress minus m is equal to p into e divided by z t then f inf that means fb is equal to p by a plus p e divided by section modulus of bottom fiber now the combine two equation with 1 2 4 limiting zone is defined by following four equation first equation eccentricity e is less than equal to minus zt into ftt divided by p plus zt divided by area plus minimum moment divided by force second equation eccentricity e less than equal to zb into fct divided by p minus zb divided by area plus m minimum divided by p and here eccentricity e is greater or equal to minus zt into fcw divided by eta p plus zt divided by area plus md divided by eta p and fourth one eccentricity e greater or equal to zb into ftw eta p minus zb divided by area then md divided by eta p here the curve represent by look at this the cable is provided like this way this one is the neutral axis and e1 dash is above the eccentricity from neutral axis and e2 is the below one eccentricity from neutral axis okay same here this one is the point where e1 and here the bottom that's e2 and this highlighted portion is known as a limiting zone and central line of beam that is neutral axis the curve represent by two of this four equations are shown in figure positive eccentricity r plotted below the center of section and the permissible tendon zone is controlled by only two of four equation for prismatic member with constant processing force the permissible tendon zone is controlled by 2 and 3 okay for prismatic that means constant area is controlled by this 2 and 3 equation and for non prismatic it is limiting zone is controlled by 1 and 4th equation okay here our theory of limiting zone is completed now in next session we solve the example of pretension beam just now we stop here